Hi there, and welcome to your 2024 R Pod 190. We are just gonna start off the back of the unit here. If you notice, you have your spare tire located right in the back here. We're here on the left side of the unit. Here we have you do have a little bit of storage space in this corner as well as all four corners of the unit. You do have stabilizer, stabilizer jacks. The way those guys work is you're just going to take the tool which is located inside the front compartment. It is just a three quarter inch socket essentially. You just take this foot, run it down to the ground. Once the foot contacts the ground, just giving another eighth quarter turn just to snug it up and it's going to take you a bouncer sway you see we have in the unit right now away. In this little guy here, you just open up that tab Lift that open and this is where going to be your sewer, where your sewer hose is located. Once fully extended, it is about 15 or 20 feet long. We just keep that stored away inside there to keep most of the smell out of the unit. Here's where you're going to find your main power cord in. It's just a 30 amp twist lock connection. You just take note of that notch there. It lines up with this notch here. Get that guy into place. Eighth turn to lock it in. You got that threaded collar to really lock it down. If you follow that cord back, you do have your standard 30 amp plug end. Most campsites should have this and you can plug right on in, but let's say you're at home and you wanna run the fridge, or your campsite only has 15 amp service, we do include a 15 amp plug adapter. Just keep it in mind when you're going down to 15 amps power, you can't be running your air conditioner, it's really just to be only running your lights in your fridge. You got your main sewer outlet right here. You're just gonna take this guy, give it a twist, and it's gonna pop right on off. You're just taking note of those two ears there. There's gonna be the same two ears that your sewer hose had, and they just hook up like so. This is gonna be your gray tank, so it's gonna be a little bit cleaner of water. You are gonna want to make sure to empty your black tank, which is in front of the tire here first, as this is gonna be your dirtiest water filled from your toilets. It does work the same way, just again, it's your dirtiest water, so you will wanna empty that first just to keep that hose that little bit cleaner. Got a cable satellite inlet. Right here is just a refrigerator service port. Not much you need to worry about there. Whenever your furnace is running, this is gonna be blowing out hot air, so just be mindful of that. You got your two low point drains. So if you wanna drain those lines with all the water inside there, you can use them. You got a fresh water drain located right here. You're just gonna twist that cap off and all the water should drain out of your fresh tank. Speaking of that, you have your fresh tank fill right here. Just put a garden hose in there, turn it on. It's gonna fill your fresh tank, and that's what your water pump draws off of. Or if you're out of sight with service, you get your city water connection. You've got a garden hose in there, turn it on, it pressurizes all the lines without you need to run your water pump. You also have your hot water heater, little access port here. You're gonna notice this guy up here, your pressure relief valve. Whenever you first get to your campsite, you just wanna give that guy a pull, making sure you get a shot of water coming out of there, letting you know that the tank's full. We currently have the tank drained because customers are going to be picking it up soon. So it wouldn't be safe to fire up. You're going to have a little switch here down in the right hand, left hand corner. That's just to turn it on on electric. If you are firing it on gas though, I'm going to go over a reset procedure once we get inside. And the button I'm referring to is just right here. box then of course you got your propane tank cover this does just slide off by loosening off this wing nut and you'd be able to take the tank right off and get access to switch it out but you can get most of what you need to do just by opening up that flap and just opening that up counterclockwise just like any standard barbecue style tank opening up the flow of propane to the unit okay come back up front one way's up the other way's down inside this front compartment here just opening this guy up and this is where you're going to find your tool for those front stabilizer jacks, as well as 25 foot water hose and 15 amp park adapter. Whenever you have your black tank connected and your valve open, you do have a black tank flush, so let's say you're noticing false monitor panel readings, or just an overall odor around the unit, you can thread a guard hose in here, turn it on, it's gonna flush that tank out, keeping things that little bit cleaner. You got two 110 plugs. Then in the back, again, with some more storage. Put inside the unit. You're taking that assist handle, pushing it up. And it it'll lock into place. Take your stick, pull it out. Then you can open up the door and hop on in, taking a step inside. 
first things first, we're gonna right where your fire extinguisher, that's pull the pin and shoot, just like home. You got some lights up here. You're gonna turn that porch light on with that middle switch. You got your interior light switch on the far right, and then you have an awning LED switch. And then you got your slide out button, always making sure you know what's on either side of the slide before you ride, run it. Push that button down, the slide is gonna start making its way out. Once it's fully extended, you're just gonna hear the motors wind up. And cut out, and that's when you know you're fully extended. Then you got your awning switch right next to that. Hitting that button up allows that awning to extend out. Once fully extended, you're gonna see the back of the metal tube and the little flap hang down. Whenever you get to about five to 10 kilometer an hour winds, you are just gonna to wanna to make sure you bring in that awning. That way you don't run the risk of ripping your fabric. There you go, you got that little flap coming down on the back of that metal tube, and you know you're fully extended. Now for you take start raining, you take any arm, front or rear, and just push down on them. It's gonna change the pitch of the awning head, allowing water to down run off. Now if you like that angle better, you can do the same thing with the front arm and it'll allow for more shade underneath. Just always making sure you do push those arms back to straight before you bring them in. That way you don't run the risk of bending anything. To bring it in, you do just hit that, turn that button down to make sure the awning rolls the right way in. Once those arms contact the side of the trailer, the motors are just gonna cut out and that's when you're fully in. And then of course you have your main fuse and breaker panel right down here. Just pushing that down, that'll open that guy up. Whenever you have a, few, a breaker trip, it's gonna sit in the middle. So you do just have to turn it off and then back on again to reset it. And whenever you have a fuse pop, there'll be a little red indicator light letting you know, know which one's gone. You have some storage space around here. This does have a TV back in here. So in case you were wanting to have a TV, you can do so. You do a 12 volt plug in as well as cable satellite. In the dinette area, some storage underneath, of course. And then if you want to fold this down into a bed, you can do so. You're just having to take these bottom legs off, sit that tabletop on these black ledges you see, and then you can take your back cushions to fill in the center and it would make a bed. All the blinds in here do work the same way. They just kind of sit where you leave them. Pull down, they'll stay there. You can push them up and they'll go up. You got your sink with hot and cold water. Storage underneath, just being mindful of drains and water lines. And then of course you got your stove, which works pretty much just like how you would think. You just turn that over to high, hit it with a lighter and it would light right on up. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lighter with me today right now. Storage all around. You got your microwave which is actually a convection of as well. And it's just like home, not much I'll show you there. And then you come to your medic refrigerator, opening this guy up, you do have a little freezer up top. You're gonna notice this little white fin. The further you slide this white fin up the metal fin is the colder the fridge is gonna get. We currently have it off. If you were to push that button to flush, it would be uh, on. With it on auto, it's gonna first search for shore power. If shore's if shore power is taken away, it'll automatically switch over to gas. If you want it to run solely on gas, you do just have to depress that button and it'll only run on gas. Storage all around. Opening up this door here, you do get into the bathroom. You got hot and cold water, toilet, light switch on the left, you can get a shower. Overhead, you do have little vent fan that you can turn on just in the corner here notice that when this vent lid is all the way open it is open into the atmosphere so if it were to start raining it could get wet in here unless of course you went with your max air cover in which case it could go over here and you can run this fan whether it was raining or not you can contact a parts department and we can get you a quote put together to get one of those installed on the wall here, you're gonna notice you got your monitor panel system. So you got all your tank and battery levels up on top. And then of course you have your hot water heater switch and your water pump switch. If you hit that water switch switch on and you're not on electric, 
and you're on gas, this fault light's gonna come on, the water heater's gonna try lighting itself three times. If on the third try it doesn't light, this fault light will stay on. In that case, you do just have to turn this switch off. Go hit the reset button and it'll try relighting itself. You got your water pump switch, turning that on draws from your fresh tank. You got a furnace inside this unit and a stove that both run off propane. You got an LP, te LP detector right near the ground here. If this guy were to start going off, you just want to turn off the main supply of propane at the front of the unit and open up some windows and ventilate it out a little bit. Right here, down here, you got your main GFI plug. You got tests on the bottom, reset up top. If you ever have an outlet that doesn't work, this would be the first place I'd check. Another thing I'm going to note is your main furnace exhaust. Uh, your main furnace port is right here. It's going to blow all its hot air out of this port underneath the bed. So if you wanted to get a little fan to stick underneath there, I do suggest doing so just to help move, move the air around a little bit. On the wall here, you got your thermostat. Works pretty simply. You hit that button once, it's going to illuminate itself. Hit it again, it'll allow you to switch between your different modes, which is cool, heat, or cool plus heat. So depending on what you have your thermostat to, it'll switch between both. If you set it to cool, it's gonna move all its air through the air conditioner. And you can move the louvers around up top here to direct your airflow. If you wanna run just the fan, you can do so. You just have to hit the button twice. So you get into your fan control of either high or low. On the wall on the other side here, again, another TV backer in case you were to want to mount another TV back here. You get your bed, windows, not much else for this unit here. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call.